I spent too much time skinny dipping back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that image. <laughs> well, that's not that's not Big Chief now. That's Big Chief back in the day. You were that's a different fella. Slim, true, and racy. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I actually did run from cops one time and uh, fit myself under a VW Bug, and I was only about quarter way under there because that's all it would fit. And uh, <laughs> he cop was like, "I hate to tell you, boy, but." Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank our friends at Premium Bar Products for sponsoring this episode. If you're ready to step up your game at your home bar, check out premiumbarproducts.com to choose from their wide selection of glassware, all of which can be custom engraved with your personal message or logo and there's no minimum order so after the episode head over to premiumbarproducts.com and check out everything they have to offer now let's get on with the show Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is The Bourbon Road, and we are once again at Jip the Bend Farm in front of the fire, Woodrow on the floor, snowing outside. I don't know if it gets much better than this. I mean, really snowing outside, Mike. It's uh, this is a, it's almost like country Christmas. <laughs> country <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, this is, uh, if you look outside right now, you'd think it's, uh, you'd hear uh, white Christmas being sung. Yeah, I'd say the maturation in the barrels has ceased. Yeah, it's all squoze out of the wood, right? Yeah, it's it's just sitting there. <laughs> all right, well, we got a great show tonight, Mike. We got somebody special in the studio tonight. We also have a gallery. Yeah, we had some people come up from Memphis. Uh, Drew and his wife came up from Memphis to just just to hang out with us. Rodies, he's one of our moderators, Drew Allen. For everybody that don't know him, uh, make sure you you follow him on Instagram. Make sure you uh, check him out on the Bourbon Rodies, but. Um, and then we got our wives sitting back there behind us. Yeah, don't forget our wives. Our wives, yeah. They can't cook a bourbon cake to save their life. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. I, I know it's coming. <laughs> so we have Josh Bogard with us today. He is a um, country music artist. He's right down the road from us, only 15 minutes, a little town called Mount Eden. Uh-huh. Um, you say you're from Taylorsville, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I say, well, I was born and raised in Louisville, actually, and moved out to Taylorsville. Um in the third grade, so I'm pretty much Davisville. That's all I know. So we lived in Elk Creek area. All right. We know everybody knows where Elk Creek is. Mm-hmm. But he didn't come alone tonight. He brought his guitar. I yeah. did. I did. We're going to hear some music and stuff. But we let him uh, peruse through my bourbon. And what you what'd you pick off the shelf for it's us? It's a Weller. Which one? I can't remember which one I got. It's Weller. a red label, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weller 107. One of That's the most it, popular yeah. bourbons I'd say on the face there. And it is smooth. Yeah. When we have a guest on the show, we like to let him bring a bourbon. And tonight you were able to sort of go through Mike's shelf here and pick something. I was that. lucky. And Weller's always a good choice, isn't it? Yeah. I'd say uh, if you can't afford a Pappy's and you see a Weller's, pick it up because it's, to me, it's the same juice. So I don't care what people say. Yeah. I agree. A little different in the years, but as far as the, as far as the mash bill goes and where it's aged at. Absolutely the same. I don't know. This smells so beautiful. This is why they call me the Weedy King of Kentucky right here is because I, I can't put this stuff down. <laughs> well, Josh, we we want to get into all things, you know, Josh Bogart and what you do. But before we do, we like to get straight to the whiskey. So tonight we're going to take a peek at your Weller Antique 107. We're going to talk a little bit about it, smell it, taste it, give our opinion of it, and then we'll... uh and then we'll dive in. Well, it's too late. I've been sipping on it. Josh's been sipping on it. You yeah, just I'm late, out. late to the party. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Don't put bourbon in front of me. I'll drink it. Well, I'm, I'm nosing this, Mike, and I'm getting, I'm definitely getting cherries, sweet cherries. Yeah, it's definitely sweet. But it's got a little bit of power to it. It's got that, it's got that 107. Right on the tip of the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a Kentucky hug to it, too. Yeah. I haven't got there yet, but I believe you. It's a, uh, it'll, it'll kick you a little bit, but it does have those floral notes to it. That honeysuckle, like you're walking down a country road. Um, 
you know, just that, that pizzazz to it that I love about Weller's, you know? So Mike, you're a big fan of the Weller special reserve. Yep. What, what is that something extra that 107 brings to the table? It brings that kick, that little meal kick you can get to your chest. <laughs> yeah. You sip on enough of this, uh, it'll definitely make I'm probably you. not going to remember the songs after. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh, when you're sipping on whiskey, what's your uh, what's your proof? I mean, what do you like? To, where do you like to be at? Eighty proof, ninety proof, hundred uh, proof? Probably around ninety to hundred. Around ninety. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this on one's, the rocks. This yeah. one's at one hundred and seven, so it's a little bit higher. So you're That's probably right. feeling that punch. Uh yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh, how you're from Taylorsville? How long have you been playing the guitar? Uh, fifteen years. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah. I mean, what What age were you at? Uh, let's see, I'm 37 now, so I'll tell you, I'm in my mid 20s. So that's a little later in life, right? Yeah, that yeah. You I wish I the guitar. And I stuff? wish I would have learned earlier in life. Yeah, I kind of. I Man, I was really into sports, so I played baseball all the way up through high school, and that was kind of what I was going to go and and uh, and do for a living was play play ball and that didn't work out and i kind of was after i had my uh my first child i kind of was sitting around and i was working third shift for my uncle's business and was getting really bored during the day while everybody was gone and i was up so i decided to go buy a guitar and teach myself how to play before that you just singing naked in the shower <laughs> right yeah yeah so somewhere along the way you 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 probably thought what well, so you knew you could sing no no you didn't i didn't so I thought I could sing. You like thought everybody you could sing, but nobody <laughs> confirmed that. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. even your wife. No, no, no. She didn't say, "Hey, you should." We should. No, I probably. You. Well, I'm divorced. Well, I got a, <laughs> I got a new wife now, uh, so I divorced the other one. But uh, no, when I first started really playing, I went out and did uh, pretty much what everybody else does: go out and hang with your friends and do karaoke. And and I had some friends said, "Hey, man, you don't sound you don't sound too bad. You want to you know." pick up that guitar and, and try and and i worked really hard at it and and i've been doing it since so well heck i'd say uh you know that's that's good on you to start later in life and you know try something new right you know i think all of us have those aspirations and dreams at one point in our life to wish we could sing or wish we could play an instrument i always say that well i'll tell you what my dad he's in his 60s and he just learned how to play the piano really and he's doing actually fairly good at it He's taking classes and stuff, but I mean, it's, it's never too late if you want to learn something. You just got to put the effort into it. See, I went the other way around. I played the banjo and the bass as a youngster, and now I don't do anything. So I've lost it all. No, it's lost. like riding a bike. You can't lose it. <laughs> lost everything. Huh? Well, I tell you what, you do lose when you play banjo. You you get those uh, those bloody fingers. Yeah. That's a pain to get them back. Yes, <laughs> so I have I, them. Yeah, that's right. Well, today I was telling you, I have, I fly drones, so. I was soldering some stuff today and touched the soldering gun with my. Friend. I didn't even feel it because yeah. I, I got the all calluses on all my fingers. So now let's let's get back to this bourbon. How long have you been sipping on bourbon? Uh, probably since the age of twenty one. So none before that. Mm, we're not going to say that because I don't want to get in trouble by the <laughs> parents are still around. <laughs> let's just say I have. You uh, had your first I legal sip at twenty one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what was yeah. that first? You remember um, what that first legal yeah, sip was? Wild turkey. Wild Turkey 101, 101 probably. Yes. Hey, he's in the club. He's in the club, Jim. <laughs> yes. That's, that's and, uh, Jim's favorite. That was bourbon. not – and I had – that was my first, and then I did have Pure Moonshine at 14, and uh, it was with my neighbor across the street, and I drank that, and uh, I don't remember much. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did fall out of a grain barn that he had. We had set up his kids and, and fell out the grain barn and got in trouble by the parents, and – Oh, you, you so, see, you you let it all out now because a minute ago you didn't want to talk about drinking under right. twenty one. I, I can talk now, about that. Now they you're are. fourteen years old drinking illegal whiskeys. So. <laughs> <laughs> drinking some shine. There's nothing. I mean, you're I in Kentucky. How, yeah, how I can got you some not? shine at home right now. Yeah. So you you cut some music and do you have any whiskey songs? I do. Could yeah. you rip one of those out yeah, for us? Of course. This song is called Whiskey and Wine. I'm from the country, that's where I was raised and I can tell you're more used to big city ways So let's celebrate our diversity 
We can find out what's in common to you and me. I drink my whiskey and you sip your wine. I'm rough on the edges, you're a little more fine. I bet on my money and down to my last dime. Two birds of a feather. We go together like whiskey and wine Yeah, we go together like whiskey and wine Oh, that's right Expected us to mix it all. You like to look picture perfect, but I'm off the wall. So let's celebrate our diversity. We can find out what's in common between you and me. I drank my whiskey. You sip your wine I'm rough on the edges You're a little more refined I bet on my money And down to my last dime Two birds of a feather We go together like whiskey and wine Yeah, we go together like whiskey and wine Here we go together like whiskey and wine. All right. Woo. Thank you. Awesome. A lot of, lot of truth in that song right, right. there. Yeah, yeah, there is. It uh, kind of fits fits perfect to our, I think, our podcast and our uh, bourbon group we have is, you know, people from all the, all around the world, I guess. And we like to so celebrate that diversity. And, um, you know, the one thing that brings us together is our love for whiskey and, you That's know. Right. That song fit perfect for our okay. podcast, man. Absolutely. Yeah, when you turn everything else off, you know, you turn off all the world and the news and everything that's going on, and you just focus on people and focus on good times and whiskey. It's an awesome thing. Yeah, most definitely. So you you're a you consider yourself more of a singer songwriter, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd and, say so. And how do you? So you're somewhat, I guess. Your mid twenties, you figured out you can play the guitar. You figure out you got a voice and you sing. How did that? How did that accumulate? Did you just record somebody else's song, or did you say, you know what, I can sit down and write a song? Well, you know, songwriting came a little bit later after that. So when I really first started getting out and playing, you know, you really kind of got to get your feet wet. And so I, you know, of course, I was doing a lot of cover songs then and playing bars. That's mostly what people want to hear. They don't want to hear your own music. Yeah, uh, even Nashville to this day is still like that. Um, so really writing, just being around friends who started really kind of having their own music. And I was like, man, I really need to have my own songs. I need to do things. And and so that was kind of really, you know, of course, I know you've had Dustin on here and, uh, Dustin, I've written songs with him and, uh, that's really kind of actually where I got started with, was with Dustin writing songs and, and it's progressed since then. I've written songs with Shannon Lawson and, and, uh, really just kept going and that's i found what i wanted to, to do when it comes to music is is write music that people can relate to from all over the world yeah i think you music is kind of like whiskey it it'll bring you together you know people can appreciate mm-hmm. a man that's sitting there on a guitar just singing singing his heart out and stuff and you know singing out is kind of what's in his mind what he's truly thinking right um and man I got to respect you for that song right there, putting that out there. So have you cut that as an EP? Yes, that was off our last EP, Better All the Time. Which you can find that on like Mm -hmm. Amazon Music. You can find that on any platform, iTunes, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, all that good stuff. Because we we definitely want our listeners to be listening to that. You can find it. You just got to type in Josh Bogart. It'll be there. All right. So what's the, uh, you've cut a couple EPs. What's some other song that you cut? Uh, Well, we got Better All the Time. Um, And then... uh, we just did one called Just For Tonight. And then, of course, we did Code Dead Hands that Dustin wrote. And then uh, Bourbon and Magnolia. And uh, what's the other one we got going? 
I got uh, I got quite a few that were getting ready to start cutting. I got five that were getting ready to cut. So wow, we got quite a few. Yeah, COVID of with with that going on, I've had some time to write. So with with the music and stuff, was the traveling hard to get used to and going to different bars and playing and trying to set that up for yourself, setting up different bars to play at different yeah. venues. Yeah, it, you know when you're when you're starting out doing things. Uh, for me wise, you know, when you're doing things on your own, you don't really have, you know, a management company or anybody really helping you out. So I really had to just stay out late and bourbon was a good one. Cause I, so I would go out and drink bourbon with friends and, and owners of bars or radio station people and, and just really, you know, connect with, with the audience or people that I'm playing with and, and try to get, you know, people along the way as, as I was going to get bookings and, and people, a lot of, you know, my fans and people that I'm friends with helped me out all along the way. Speaking of fans, I mean, when you're out and doing, doing the circuit and you're you're visiting the bars and 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 and, and having performances, if you got a group of fans that kind of follow you around oh, a little yeah, bit, definitely, yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah, so uh, you've actually played here in Shelbyville mm-hmm. recently. I have you played at the Barrel Room. Yep. That's kind of old stomping grounds for Mike and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of our. I, there's not a whole lot of bars in Shelbyville, so nope. you know that's that's a little good little bar and they bring in local artists or up and coming artists and let them play there. We actually saw him play over at Jeff, the Creed distillery yep. on new year's Eve. One, one evening. Love that place. Uh, yeah. Night. I think we were, we were dressed up like, uh, like uh, 1920s 30s. people or yeah, something. 30s. We? It was yeah. the thirties. I think Gangsters, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> prohibition style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, you, you pulled out all the stops on that one. <laughs> Did you, were you all dressed up all the way? This guy, this guy, Mike here, I'm telling you, he, he had the ultimate gangster outfit. You got to get a pocket watch and stuff. And, you know, you just, I, I think I was always born in the wrong era. I should have been born in the middle 1800s or Mm -hmm. in that era of 1920s and stuff where if somebody was rude to you, probably just pop them in the mouth and everybody would, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> say hey he deserved that right you know yeah it's funny you say that because my grandmother she my family originated from new york and so my grandma used to tell me about she was you know in around in the 30s and just i asked her because i always was like you know where all the men just dressed up constantly all the time she said all the time to she the said, you know you went out with your shoes on you had your sunday's best on pretty much when you went out guys had their hats and and i'm a big hat guy like all different types of hats so I'd say I'd be right there with you and when being in the 30s and 40s would have been a year what I would have liked. So is it true what they say? If you wear a hat all the time, it makes your hair stop growing or something? I don't know. It's it's done mine pretty. Or you, <laughs> it hasn't made the beard stop growing. No, it hasn't. Well, you know, I, I, I'm losing the hair up top, so I started growing the beard, so at least I have some kind of hair to flip around. I can't say that. My hair just grows constantly. I, it's it's a horrible thing, I think. I wish it, I wish I would go bald, but I'm an ugly bald man. I know I'm that. I'm not completely bald, but I'm thin. It's it's in the back. I think it might be. I'm going to blame it on the hats. But. Yeah, I think the hat has something to do with it. I mean, I wear a hat about half the time, I think. I've worn a hat since, like, forever. I don't think that you can find a picture out there without a hat on. The, the Bourbon Road hat does not cause baldness. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So you said, uh, you know, you'd pick this Weller off the shelf. That's, you said that's your favorite bourbon. Cause I'd ask you what your, what well, your I really bourbon. just got to, got to get into Weller just in the last, I don't know, six months, maybe if that. So I've been, like I said, I had that, my buddy Harold kind of got me into doing bourbon, bourbon tasting Thursdays with him. And, and really I got the, the regular Weller started with just a green and then kind of went up and had the orange and orange label. And then, uh, I like the taste, so I've been sticking with Weller and that and Old Forester. When you can find it, right? Mm, when, yeah, well, my drummer, find. he travels around the country, and he can get Weller all the time, so I just got to call him and say, hey, man, when you're out. We need to have his drummer on. <laughs> he, he must go to Texas and Ohio a lot. He, he, does a, he travels a lot, too, so he, uh, he's always finding some kind of bourbon. Yeah, you used to be able to find Weller around here. I mean, you used to be able to find the special reserve without much difficulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even that now is hard from green labels, hard to find here. Well, now. Every, everybody's just stockpiling it. Yeah. Usually if I go to Texas, I'll bring back, at least try to bring back six to 12 bottles just to have it right. uh, and put it on the counter and kind of hide it away in my little bourbon stash. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe it's, is it bad? Cause I always just drink mine. I don't, no, I don't, I, that's what it's meant to do. That's right. I don't, I don't keep it. Do. I don't keep it around. I usually just sip on it and yeah. I got some that I'm just prepared just in case zombies are walking around. 
You know, it's never bad to have bullets or bourbon. Right. Bullets and bourbon. <laughs> bullets and bourbon. Is there a song called Bullets and Bourbon? No. I don't know. That might be a pretty good song right there. Now I know yeah. Randy's working on a song. <laughs> Randy Minnick. He, he's, bourbon and Blondes. Bourbon and Blondes. He's working on that. But uh, yeah, Bullets and Bourbon. That sounds like maybe a possibility. I don't know. Well, yeah. actually, they don't really go together too good, do they? Well, probably not. Alcohol and gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting up on our second half. Do you think you could take us out with a song on this first half? Sure. I'm going to do the song actually off the whiskey and wine. Uh, we'll do uh, better all the time. She was standing on the front porch crying in my rear view. I thought I'd head to somewhere better, someplace new. I pack it up and leave it all behind me And start again Just when you think one door is closed And another's opening If I could only Deal with the lonely Just say goodbye One last time I call you on the weekend When I've been out drinking but you with your girlfriend Not pay me no mind Now was down to a letter Girl, I left you better But you're getting better Getting better all the time Little towns, they talk too much, no, everything And I can see on how you're doing without me When I see you in your picture smiling, so hard to breathe I gave it up for an empty highway, this broken dream If I could only deal with the lonely just say goodbye One last time I call you on the weekend When I've been out drinking But you're with your boyfriend Not pay me no mind Now it's down to a letter Girl, I left you better But you're getting better Getting better time and I can see that water tower fading from my view at least a thousand memories leading back to you if I could only deal with the lonely just say goodbye one last time I call you on the weekend when I've been out drinking But you're with your boyfriend Not pay me no mind Now it's down to a letter Girl, I left you better But you're getting better Getting better all the time You're getting better all the time You're getting better all the time Well, you know, you can't drink whiskey without glassware. And Mike and I are extremely pleased to have a sponsor like Premium Bar Products. Premium Bar Products offers direct to consumer the finest whiskey glasses, cocktail glasses, and bar tools with your own personal engraving. I mean, you can write anything you want on these glasses, anything from a company logo to a personal statement 
and there are no minimum orders. Their direct consumer platform offers you the opportunity to purchase small quantities of your favorite glass shapes that enhance the pleasure of enjoyment and drinking a whiskey and make it all very positive. They offer the absolute finest trending and handmade glasses as well as a comprehensive range of styles and all of their items have been designed with purpose, practicality, and longevity in mind. So if you're a bourbon or whiskey group and you need custom logos, you need to reach out to premium bar products. If you're an individual, you just want a few for your bar to impress your friends, to give out as gifts, you need to call premium bar products. They need to be your one and only source for custom glassware. I can tell you right now, the Bourbon Road, that's who we use. Janie and Carson and the team there at Premium Bar Products will take care of you. They'll treat you like family and they'll take care of you with every order. All right, so we are back. We've got Josh Bogart in the house. Hey, hey. Loved that song closing out the first half. We have a new bourbon in our class now, Mike, and this is one that you picked. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a pick. I'm going to pick a weeder. Um, so this is uh, Maker's Mark Cast Strength. You know, Maker's Mark, me and me and old Maker's Mark go back a long ways, you know, but the weeded king of Kentucky has once again chose a great whiskey. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you. Now, the first half we had Weller Antique, 107 proof. Second half, we've got Maker's Mark Cast Strength, 108.8 proof. Stepping it up a bit. So we did it in the right order anyway, right? Well, maybe. <laughs> but we got Josh Bogart with us. That's right. Well, I'm going to tell you this one I definitely hit you in the sinus area. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It, like when I took a I took a small sip, it was it was almost it stayed there for a minute and kind of cleared the sinuses out. So. Now, have you have you had Maker's Mark before? Yeah, I had Maker. Not this this one though, but not Cast Strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, they changed the bottle out here this last year and went back to their standard bottle. But um, that's why I, I've tried to cover this bottle right here a little bit. And the wax on this bottle, uh, you know, they're famous for their red wax. This wax on this bottle goes almost all the way down the neck. Um, so, it does go all the way down. It's on the shoulder. Yeah. 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 You don't see that a whole it's lot. on the backside, these. right? Yeah. Somebody so, got a little aggressive on their dip in there. Hey, I... I see something like that. I got to grab it. It's a special bottle. Now, I know when you go in the, when you go, so they kind of changed things up a little bit here in the past couple of years when you go there. They got that nice big dipping room there in the in the bottle shop. That well, wasn't always like that, though. It used that to wasn't. be just a little down home place you'd go into. I remember going there 15, 20 years ago and getting a bottle and dipping it ourselves, and it wasn't like that. Now, you know? now Loretto, Kentucky is on the map. Well, I don't know if it is really. It <laughs> You can't get there from nowhere. That's for sure. Um, and I actually had a guy in the Coast Guard. Uh, he was a cook. He was a horrible cook. His name was Billy Bagley, but he was from there. And I asked him, where are you, where are you from? And he'd tell me, right of Kentucky. And I was like, where's that at? And he's like, well, there ain't nothing there. And I was like, you sure? I said, I've heard that name before. And he's like, well, I don't think there's nothing. I was like, there's bourbon there. And he's like, I don't know. But I think he's a Kentucky State Trooper now. So if you ever get pulled over by this gangly redheaded guy that's a state trooper <laughs> you probably outrun him i'm pretty positive no yeah. he's just cooking <laughs> yeah, they always, they always yeah, talk about those little towns you know being one stoplight or three stores in a stoplight or something like that this is 72 rick houses in a stoplight mm-hmm. right yeah it's it's not much there and like i said you can't get there from here really um you got to take a lot of left turns and right turns to get there yeah well, that's them are the good roads right there but yeah. i will say yeah. this much about going down to the maker's mark it's a hell of a tour, heck of a tour, great grounds. It's a good visit. So if you haven't, you know, I mean, you got to get off the bourbon trail just a little bit, right, Mike? Well, that's part of the bourbon trail. You, you, I mean, you got to get off the main kind of path. Yeah, you you can't stay in Barstown or Louisville or Lexington or Frankfurt. Uh, you need to get out there and, and see Maker's Market is definitely, you know, I think a heritage center or something like that. You know, something you want to go see is something you can take your family to. There's all kinds of stuff down there to do. Uh, it's super beautiful. There's a couple covered bridges down yeah. that way. Um, you know, like Josh said, those are the kinds of roads you want to get back on. And you want to see real America, real people, meet real people. That's that's the kind of trips you got to take. There's some real people in Loretto. That's, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this whiskey, guys. 
So we picked this one, Josh. Mike picked this one, actually. It would be highly unlikely for me to pick a weeder. If, if I'd have got the choice, I'd have probably picked one of Mariah's over there. You, you bet. See, I'm going to go ahead and I'm get one of my bullshit <laughs> T-shirts on. Josh, I'll tell you, every time he comes over here, the first bottle he ever reaches for is an Arai. He'd be like, I'm going to get myself pour that Weller 12 right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. My, I've got a bottle of Weller 12. So why, <laughs> why do you like rye and you like wheat so much? Can you tell me that? So I like the wheat because it's a little bit smoother. You know, that bad word in whiskey, but um, it is a little bit smoother, softer on the palate and stuff. Um, the older you get, the higher you get, you still get that bang, that spice and right. stuff. But it's just a more refined to me. It's softer up front, a yeah. little bit sweeter. Yeah. And rye whiskeys have a little bit more spice to them. They're kind of, I mean, if you like hot food, right. you like spicy food, mm-hmm. you're going to like rye whiskeys. Rye, a little bit rye bourbon, not rye whiskey. Rye whiskey, rye bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Usually rye whiskeys to me are, are super sweet. It's like sucking on candy cane or something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, a rye whiskey. But rye bourbon, though, has that just, it, it'll punch you in the throat. Like uh, Rocky Balboa, you know, it's just got that big so spice to it. But I always think rye whiskeys are more, you know, sweet. and They do have that pop to it, but just not as much as a rye yeah. bourbon. Well, well, speaking of Rocky Balboa, so we're, we're drinking Maker's Mark cast drink today. <laughs> And Mike, you, it's kind of been a while since you attributed a, a music artist to a whiskey. Oh, you're going to tell me name this thing? I think you need to name a music artist that matches Maker's Mark cast drink. Uh, let me uh, let me drink on this for a second. And we'll I'll pick one out. And then and Josh, I want you to think about one too. Drinking this whiskey, who does it make you think of? And then you guys can both talk about who 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 this whiskey reminds you of. That's some good ass whiskey right there. I tell you what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maker's Mark. They they make. I already some good got stuff. mine. All right. I'd, I'd have to almost take my boots off, let Woodrow kick down here beside me, and just watch his fire all night right here. This is uh, sit down and relax whiskey right here. Yeah. What do you got? Well, I would say whiskey bent and hell bound, but. <laughs> 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 well, heck. Who do I think of when I think of this? Yeah. <sighs> male, male or female? It's a male. Okay. Um, and I wouldn't call him more of a, a, I mean, he's not a well-known artist. And if I say his name, a lot of people probably think of him as an actor. Um, but I think of him as one of the greatest songwriters ever. And it's Chris Christopherson. Oh, yeah. I already knew who you were talking about when you All said right. that. I can um, agree with you with that. Great actor in some old school movies like Convoy. I can see where you're coming from that. Yeah. yeah. Sunday morning he's, coming he's down. He's a laid back. Chris Christopherson. So he's not back, kicking yeah. the speaker over off the stage or nothing. He's no. kicking back in his chair. He's not a David Allen Cole. No, he's not yeah. that. It's just, to me, this is not punch in the throat. It's It's got that spice, that kick to it, but he's like a written really? just some magical songs in his right. life. And and he was p- part of the highway, man, back in the day. Um, yeah. You know, that, Riders in the never, Sky. I don't think we'll ever see that again yeah. in country music. Maybe. Well, you, you come up and get four guys. and Well, we've tried. You tried? I got some. I got friends that we, we've done some shows, four of us, and, you know, actually we got a show coming up February 13th at Lexington, and there'll be four of us, and uh, called the Headliner Showcase. Where are you guys playing at? Austin City Saloon, February 13th. All right. Well, this show will be out well in advance of that. So, listeners, if you're if you're in that area, Lexington, Kentucky, um, you want to check out that yeah, show? Yeah, come out. It's uh, four artists. Got Tyler Halsey, me, Chris Linton, and uh, who's the other one we got? Uh, Brad Harden. Yep. So, you said, you know, you didn't start music until you are a little older and you um, – you know, you just kind of you're really just starting on your path. I mean, it t- takes a couple of years, right? What's your What's your one favorite country song that you like to play that's not yours? Uh, uh, well, it'd be uh, be some. I like. I'm I'm more of old, are you talking about old school or new school? It, what What's that favorite song oh, that you like to rock it out to? Merle Haggard's my favorite song. I mean, I, I love some old Merle Haggard. Could you okay. play us one of those? Yeah, let's hear one of those. <laughs> Wish a buck was still silver It was back when a country was strong It was back before Elvis And before 
the Vietnam War came along. I'm a full of Beatles and yesterday when a man still were and still would. Best of the free life behind us now And the good times ain't over for good Stop rolling downhill like a snowball Headed for hell No kind of chance for the flag the Liberty Bell Wish a Ford and a Chevy will still last ten years like they should The best of the free life behind us now And the good times ain't over for good that would have to be one of my favorite songs. Oh right man, there. I could listen to that all night long. That's a that's a classic right there. Yeah, right? That's that's uh my grandfather. You know, my he uh he had a farm and stuff, and you know taught me how to ride horses when I was in my when about four years old, and and been riding since. And and that song was one that he played a lot, and also you know Loretta Lynn. Uh, he went and rode horses with her and Sissy Lynn and all that family. Um, when I was little. And so really I got raised up on that. And that's, you know, I could say if I was going to play a song, it'd be an old Merle song. Now do you, uh, you said you, have you started gearing up more towards your songs when you play and stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're the more I write, the more I integrate them in to shows that, you know, more people want to hear, you know, the more I play them out and more people when, you know, they come and see us want to hear original music. So especially in Eastern Kentucky, you know, out, out that way they like original music. Now do you, do you drink bourbon while you're at the bar playing and stuff? Constantly. And that's why sometimes if you come to a show and I've had a good show, I might forget some things. So, <laughs> and that's from bourbon. So how does that work at the bar? So do the bars normally um, comp you your drinks or do, is, uh, it just really depends on where you're at. The venue. So everywhere's yeah. a little bit different. It's whatever's in. It depends on if you got a contract or, or what you got signed or, you know, wherever you agree on. Yeah. So sometimes there's, you know, when I used to play PBR four street a lot, there was, you know, they comped, a lot of my drinks. So by the end of the night, I couldn't remember who I was. So yeah. I, had to, I had to slow my my roll a lot. Slow your roll. Yeah. <laughs> well, they took that. They took that sign down the other day. Um, Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Sad to see it go. Kind of um, Louisville losing a lot of business down there. Yeah, I think the landscape is going to change a lot, and, and not just in you know evening venues, places you want to go and listen to bands and, and have a few drinks, but restaurants as well. I mm -hmm. think a lot of that's changing and it is. You know, we're gonna see who survived it. And, you know, it's sad that uh that it's had to be that it's had to be this way. But so how how is how has this pandemic affected kind of what you do, Josh? Well, when it comes to affecting me wise, uh, musically, it's dramatically took a, a downfall, but it also had its ups too. Cause I got to more time to sit and write and, and think about things to get more so, studio time. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and we did. And, uh, I think that was one thing that I got to spend a lot more time with my family too. So I got to kind of revamp and, and have things to write about as well. So things that I've, I didn't realize that I was missing at the time that I was playing. Cause I was, you know, music, something, I mean, that's my dream. That's my love. That's, and so when you're doing something that you love, sometimes you can get caught up in it and forget about the things that were that helped you get to where you're at or really the people that are there for you. And it's not that you mean to do it, but you just you're just gone. You're you're trying to make money and, and that. And sometimes you can kind of get lost in that. And I'd say lost in the lights, you know, and uh, the neon lights. But it, COVID really, you know. I got to I got to spend a lot of time with my kids, and that was one thing that was very special that I got to do that I haven't been able to do in a while. And I, it's I'm grounded now more. And it's it's not that I don't want to play. I'm picking and choosing what I play more, and it's not that I need to play music, but I'm going to pick the venues if if that makes sense. Sure. Your your kids ask you to play a lot for them. Oh yeah, they know all my songs, every one of them by heart. 
Really? Oh, no, yeah, they could sing them right now to, to word by word. Now, have you, how old are your kids? Uh, nine, 10, and, and 13. And have they started playing a guitar? Nope, they want to, but it's, uh, well, you got a 10 year old, they can't make up their mind what they want to do. So. Yeah. Oh, we <laughs> uh, me okay. and Jim both been there. I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, mine are in the sports and video games. So I got one that plays football, the other one's a gymnastics, and the other one likes video games. So. Now, you mentioned in the first half that you were um, kind of on a track to play ball. Mm-hmm. What what sport was that? Baseball. Baseball. Mm-hmm. So you big baseball fan. Oh, yeah. I played baseball all the way up till I was a senior in high school, and college didn't quite fit. What, so. what position? You- Shortstop and second base. Shortstop. All right. So you were quick. Yeah. You're fast. Yeah. You got to be fast to play sport, shortstop. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, if anybody's ever broke, but I had Spencer County, I threw like 11 double plays in one game. Wow. So I don't know if that's a record there. Good or memories, not, though, right? It was great memories. Awesome. Yeah. That's where you went to school at in Taylor's Spencer County High School, yeah. Some good memories there. Oh, yeah. Back in high school. Memories. Well, you know, growing up in the country, I mean, that was, you got to ride around and you get to do ride four wheelers and, and, Tear things up, and it wasn't drink shine and drink shine when you're fourteen, <laughs> <laughs> and try to hide it from your parents. Yeah, I mean, maybe you know, field parties. I mean, there's a lot of things that you, that country folk do that yeah. other people well, other don't, don't do. Right? You yeah. know, it's just I, I I feel blessed to be able to be out in the country, but it's still country right now. Yeah, I remember going to a barn party. We used to do barn party field well, parties, constantly. you know. Yep. Yeah, but going to a barn party when I was younger, and they were a great time. You know, you. <clears throat> show up at somebody's old dilapidated barn and everybody would have, you know, bring something and pour it in a, in a big, in a big 55 gallon drum and you'd dip out of it and have, it was good. Great time. And then the cops would show up, you know, and everybody would take off running me included running <laughs> into the cornfield, right. To try and get away from them. Oh. You get way out halfway into the cornfield and you realize, wait a minute, my car is back there. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I guess they're going to get me anyway. I spent too much time skinny dipping back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that image. <laughs> well, that's, that's not cornfield. That's backwards. not Big Chief now. That's Big Chief back in the day. You were that's a different fella. Slim, trim, and racy. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I actually did run from cops one time and uh, fit myself under a VW Bug, and I was only about quarter way under there because that's all it would fit. And, uh, <laughs> he cop was like, "I hate to tell you, boy, but." I could see all of you. <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had that happen. Me and a friend of mine were at, were at a party and went to go run, and I couldn't. I was so drunk, I couldn't make it over the fence. And I was trying to get my leg over, and they, of course, they knew who I was, so they come over and they were like, "Bogard, you know, just come on down over the fence." I'm like, "I'm, I'm going, I'm going." And it didn't work out. So, <laughs> yeah, those are the days, right? I, I, I'd, I'd gotten a minor in possession and a minor. I was distributing to minors uh, ticket. See, we didn't, we, we didn't, we got just kind of set down. And if we were underage, a lot of times, if we got caught at a party underage, you know, and got the speech, got the speech. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom is scary. So usually, if they were going to call your parents, you were in some trouble with mine, at least. Uh, so, but a lot of times they were just, you know, you need to not do this, sit down. We were drinking pour everything in, out. We were drinking in public on a little square in a town of Evant, Texas. And there was probably 40 people up there. And I'd, I'd bought all the booze for everybody. Um, God, I guess because I looked the oldest, I'd go in the liquor store and just buy it. <laughs> so I went in there and bought it and brought it back, and everybody's drinking. And me and my buddy are sitting inside the pickup, probably listening to an eight track, probably a Merle Haggard eight track tape or something. Me and him were sitting there drinking beer, and I see the cop lights everywhere, and I just sat there. He got out and took off running. I just sat there. I was like, hey, I'm caught now. So I took my beer and hid it behind my seat just a little bit where I thought it would be hidden. And the cop opened the door and it's tipped over and it started pouring out on the ground. And that cop was like, I sure hope that's water. And I said, I sure hope it is too, officer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he told, he said, you better tell your buddy to stop running before I shoot him. And I was like, all right. Hey, Larry, you better stop running. Right. And me and Larry are still friends this day. I just talked to my dad and said, I need to do me a favor down in Texas. And I remember me and him having to go see the judge. And the judge was like, boy, you can either pay Two hundred and fifty dollars, and not say nothing to your mom and daddy, or you you pay a hundred dollars, and I tell your mom and dad, and I was like, I'll pay that two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Where do I sign up for that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh. Well, you know, things are different this year a little bit. At least we hope they are. Right. right? We hope things ease up a little bit, and I think I see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Mike. Yeah, yeah I, think? I think so. So what's on the horizon for you? What do you got going on? Obviously you mentioned you got that 
event coming up here shortly, but what do you got going on that people can check you out? Well, I got, so I got a new song coming out. Uh, hopefully in the next, just give or take a week or two. If, if things work out, sometimes they don't always work out the way that we want them to, but I got a song called wrong side of loving you coming out. Uh, old school country. Um, just released just for tonight. So you can pick it up. That, that's been out for maybe a month or two. Uh, so musically wise, like getting out and playing bars are really starting to kind of open up. So we just had our first show back uh, a couple of weeks ago at new directions and which actually was great. It felt good to play in front of people again and actually have you know, an audience. So we got some upcoming shows and new records coming out. So, just stay tuned and go Facebook and check it out. So are you scheduling like two months out right now? It's yeah, it's, it, I'm really spotty. I'm I'm not trying to get ahead of myself because last year I did that and man, it just crashed. Um, so I'm kind of just kind of playing it by ear this year, man. If if I don't book a show, I'm gonna book a songwriting thing. So it's either I'm gonna play live or I'm gonna write music. So well, maybe we can get you to come down here, Jeff to Ben Farm, and just play in our field. Let's heck, do it. At, uh, that sounds like a good summer weekend right there. Yeah, yeah. a couple hundred roadies here, right? Well, I don't know about a couple hundred, but a couple dozen. <laughs> a couple dozen sounds good. <laughs> so that new song you you, uh, you have written and you recorded, uh, it's mm-hmm. about to come out. You think you could sing that for yeah. our listeners? Yeah, sure. Well, she said up and wandered how things could have been If I'd up and changed all my rowdy ways Again But these late night benders Sure don't soothe her soul Never know. I'm on the wrong side of loving you It seems like you've washed your hands of me It's a cold hard truth I'd never be the man need to be and I wasted your time all these years ago and trying to walk the straight line just ain't working anymore
many times before And I've broken her heart More times than I can count And I've let her down Each and every time Yes, I'm on the wrong side of loving you And I guess that's why I'm on the wrong side of loving you Well, Mike, you know what? I can't imagine a better pairing than Maker's Mark Cast Strength and Josh Bogart's new single. Yeah, I think that that's a that's a that's a winner right there. I appreciate it. We got uh, you know, of course, doing an acoustic don't do it justice, but uh, I got a really good steel player on there, a pedal steel player. So it's definitely uh, the band killed this one. They really knocked yeah. it out of the park. So awesome. I can't wait for people to release it so they can kind of hear it. But it, like I said, it's something different than what you know what I've normally you know, I've written and put out. So I'm kind of, I'm really wanting to kind of just venture and do different things when it comes to country music. So I'm going to definitely keep it country. So either you'll hear something like that again, be, you know, something old school, you know, six, eight, three quarter timing to, to, you know, songs like better all the time and some uplifting songs. So yeah, got lots to come. Well, pretty awesome. Well, Josh, we'd like to give you the opportunity to let all our listeners know how to connect to you. Well, you can go to you know Facebook and just type in Josh Bogart and Dirty South. That's the band page, or just type in Josh Bogart, B O G A R D. So you can find me on Spotify, iHeart, Google Play, and pretty much any platform. Um, so you can you can find me on Instagram. Just type in Josh Bogart. So pretty much just go Google Josh Bogart and you'll find me. And if they come out and they see you play. They know you like bourbon. Oh, well, that's right. And you better have your dancing shoes on. So you better <laughs> dust them off. Well, I think your gym was getting at by the by the man a drink. Yeah. By the man a drink. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I won't see turn him it down. Playing by the man a uh, poor Wellers. That's what he likes to drink. That's right. Um, he's just a good old boy here from uh, Mount Eden, Kentucky. That's right. Which is just Country. a thrown, stone's throw down the road from us, right? On, right. Down Mount Eden Road. Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty nice to have an artist that lives right down the road from you. Um, I know we're in... Everybody calls it the flyover states, but we're really not. I, I, I think your songs are awesome. I hope I our listeners it. will uh, download your music, um, follow you on Facebook and Instagram, um, go see you in person as many venues as they can possibly see yet. Um, I, we, we wish you well. We can't thank you enough for being on uh, well, I appreciate the Bourbon you Road. Me. Absolutely. We hope 2021 is a comeback year. You know, I think uh, everybody's had to do a little bit of a reset. But, That's right. Um, certainly looking forward to. I think it's going to be a good year. Everybody's kind of wanting to get back out and get their, you know, hear some music. So might get crazy. It, it could possibly it might get, get crazy. crazy. It might be too packed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as far as the Bourbon Road is concerned, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Bourbon Road. Mike, we also have a, a website, right? Mm -hmm. We have our website, thebourbonroad.com. You can find our swag on there, our glasses, our shirts, and our hats. Um, a little bit of thing for everybody. You also find our articles on there and our reviews. Um, check that out. Um, we have a private Facebook group called the Bourbon Roadies. Absolutely. And on the Facebook group, you know, you got to answer three questions to get in. We want to make sure, you, you know, we're going to make sure you're 21 because this is a bourbon group. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that you plan on playing nice. And uh, and we want to make sure that uh, now we don't want any rudeness. Right, Mike? No, we just don't tolerate any rudeness. Uh, you know, we don't talk about politics, religion, or social issues in there. We talk about whiskey. That's what we know about. That's what we want to see post about. That's what brings us together, like we've talked about earlier in the show. Um, one nation under God, I guess, right? Um, That's right. We want all of our listeners to just talk about whiskey. That's all we want to talk about. Yeah. So, Come in there and talk about it. We got people like Josh in there. We got people, uh, master distillers in there. You name it. We got people like Drew that's sitting in here with us today. One of our roadies, moderators, everybody's in there talking about whiskey, talking about being on the bourbon trail, talking about being on a whiskey trail, talk about all kinds of crazy stuff. 
Absolutely. We do two shows a week. Um, you know, every week on a Monday, we do a short episode where we talk about a cra- up and coming craft distillery. Yeah, sometimes you know, we'll put a big boy in there. Sometimes, but normally it's somebody that's really stretching, getting out of the box a little bit, trying something new. Uh, we'll review their whiskey. We'll tell you whether or not you ought to give it a try. And then every Wednesday, we do a long format episode, a little bit like today's episode. Where we have a guest on. Uh, we kind of explore what's going on in their lives, and we drink a little bit of whiskey with them. If you want to come on the Bourbon Road, you'd like to be a guest on the Bourbon Road, you better be ready to drink a little bit of bourbon, right, Mike? <laughs> well, we'd we'd hope. One would hope you'd like to drink some bourbon with us. Um, we're we're not two guys that are have water in a glass. We definitely got some whiskey in our glass. Josh would be able to. That's true. Proof That's true. pudding, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, make sure you check out the site because if you don't know anything about bourbon, you're going to learn something yeah. today. Well, you can find me at One Big Chief. I'm Jay Shannon 63, and we will see you down the Bourbon Road.